So today we're going to start with essay writing, and then we're going to move on to research paper. When we're talking about writing an essay, we all write, but writing a structured essay, either for a paper or for any of the proficiency tests, such as TOEFL, IELTS, or PTE, OET, you have to follow a certain structure to guarantee that you achieve scores. So all these tests, and whenever we're going to write, we're dealing with language. Language is grammar and vocabulary put together. So it's really all about good structure and appropriate and accurate vocabulary. So for example, if we say, uh, we will enable the students to do this. So when you use the word enable, it's a very specific word. But you would not say, oh, we will enable the children to have free time. You wouldn't say that, even though in terms of general meaning, it would be right. But no, we will give, we will authorize the children free time. We will allow them free time. So this accuracy is very important when we're dealing with essay writing. Because remember that your writing has to be independent. Whoever's going to read if they don't understand or if they have any questions, you're not right beside them to explain anything. So your piece of writing has to be 100% independent. It has to fulfill all of the requirements that the reader may have in terms of questions, clarification. So we're going to guarantee that by starting with a structure. The structure you have, it can be either in four paragraphs or five paragraphs. Now, of course, this is an essay. We're not talking about research paper or a review. It's an essay. Or you can have five paragraphs. When would you have five paragraphs? Well, it depends on the topic that has been given to you. We're going to look into that as well. But let's get started. So when you get started, the first thing that you do to consider is you're going to look into the introduction. So how are you going to do the introduction? The introduction usually has two to three sentences, okay? That's the average of an introduction. Definitely, you must inform your reader the main topic so that the reader is, you know, introduced to the main topic and is, be, is prepared to read. Uh, a hook means, what does a hook mean? That means a sentence or some kind of phrase that draws your reader, that your reader becomes curious about what is going to be developed. Then you have a thesis statement. That is, you're going to inform your reader what will be developed and your opinion. It's very important that as a writer, you have a position or an opinion. And you're going to briefly outline how this is going to be done. If you will discuss both views, if you're going to take one side, if you're going to discuss both views and take one side, if you're going to agree, disagree. So this is all in the introduction. So if regardless if it's four or five paragraphs, you're going to have introduction, paragraph one, paragraph two, conclusion, or paragraph three. Um, you always have a topic sentence in your paragraphs. Now, what is a reading? Well, because you're the person is going to read what you wrote. You are the writer, but you have to consider that you're producing a reading passage. You will have a main topic here in your introduction, and then each paragraph will develop one main idea that refers back to the main topic. That's going to make your writing coherent, clear. So if you're talking about childhood education, you're going to then Paragraph one, you're going to develop one main idea that refers to child education. Paragraph two, they are separate ideas. You must, you can't mix ideas in a paragraph. Let's suppose they ask you, do you agree that children should have free time on a daily, should children have free time? You're going to develop that idea. And, or you say yes or no. If you say yes, you're going to write two body paragraphs. One body paragraph is going to explain the first reason why you believe that children should have free time. The second body paragraph, a second reason. So that you really support your point. In order to do so, the topic sentence. So the first reason why children should have free time is because they can 
refresh their minds and be better prepared, you know, to go back to their activities. So taking time out can be helpful. And then you're going to explain why. Then you're going to bring a, a supporting example or evidence. And then you're going to conclude your paragraph. So let's suppose the thesis statement is this one. Raising children nowadays presents many challenges for parents. So that is our first point that we want to discuss. We're going to have introduction, body one, body two. And then we would have yet the, con the conclusion. So let me just do something here that I'm, I'm getting stuck here. So I'm still, and there we go. Body paragraph one, which is the first one. So you have the thesis statement is saying that raising children nowadays presents many challenges. The first topic sentence is going to talk about the f one biggest challenge is that children today is the internet. Then you're going to go to another challenge and then adding to the challenges. So you can see that the beginning of your paragraphs, they all have some kind of marker to organize the reading. One of the biggest, another, and adding to the challenges. You already introduced two, so now you're, you're going to introduce your third one. This beginning of the paragraph, it's very important for you to organize. So if I say one of the biggest challenges that parents face in raising of children today is the internet. That's the topic. And this is related, you can see to the main, main idea that it is the challenges for parents in raising children nowadays. So main idea connecting back to the main topic. Another challenge is that parents and caregivers face today is the pressure for their children to succeed, both in school and in extracurricular activities. So once again, problem of raising children nowadays. The third problem adding to the challenges faced by parents today is a radical change in attitudes regarding discipline compared to the past. So three points that associate to the main topic. I will afterwards share this with you guys too. Another thesis statement, students writing an academic essay need to consider many stages. That's the thesis statement. The first two stages are related to pre-writing and organizing thoughts and ideas related to the topic. So once again, it's referring to stages about writing an academic essay. The third and fourth stages in the writing process are the most important ones. The fifth stage is also important since it provides the reader one final chance to review the paragraphs, check for clarity, mechanics, and structure. So you can see that the concept is main topic. Each paragraph will develop a main idea that refers back to the main topic. That's in, by following this, con this concept of writing, you will guarantee that clarity, you will guarantee cohesion, and you will also guarantee that your reader is attracted to reading because reading becomes an, a flow. He doesn't have to keep going back, understanding. It makes the reading flow. As I said, you have to consider that you're producing a reading passage. Somebody will have to read and understand what you, the writer, wrote. So clarity is fundamental for it to be a, a nice piece of reading. Well, in the introductory paragraph, what you do, what you don't. You give the reader the first best impression possible. You give the reader an idea of what you will talk about and show them how you will talk about it. And you put in your efforts to make it attractive. Once again, in order to make it attractive, long sentences are dangerous. You have to really be careful with long sentences. Long sentences can cause the reader a little bit of need of going back, understanding too many pronouns. So sometimes when you write, you have to use several resources. Simple sentences are very efficient. 
in particular for topic sentences, because it's clear to the reader what's going to happen. You also should use vocabulary that is accurate and precise. Preciseness will help in understanding. Avoid negative verbs. Negative verbs are confusing sometimes for your reader. Now, don't, don't use passive. Do not use personal pronouns like I, my, or me, unless it is a personal narrative and you are taking IELTS. IELTS, you will use the first person singular in the introduction paragraph to state your opinion. Yanni? Thank you. Can we use um, words like we are instead I, my? No. Don't use we, we, our society, you know. Remember that an academic writing, when you're dealing with an academic writing that is not a narrative, you are dealing with a piece of writing that has to be reachable to all readers. And if you put we, it's like the reader reads and he doesn't feel included suddenly. It's a topic that, he, so we avoid these situations. Now, for IELTS, you have to include a personal position always. Therefore, or position, position or opinion, you have to always include. It's part of the band descriptors. Then you will use the first person singular to express your position or opinion. Okay? So, this is an introduction. This is a student's introduction from, from my advanced writing class. So, do we learn more from finding out that we have made mistakes or from our successful actions? The students had to answer this question. So, no man is an island, and as such, he is constantly shaped and influenced by his experiences. People learn by doing and accordingly, learn considerably from their mistakes, learn considerably more from their mistakes than their success. For proof of this, consider the examples from both science and everyday experience. So by starting with some, a sentence like in quotation marks, it's kind of attractive, right? Even though we really don't know where this comes from because it's such a common expression, we have no idea who the original author is, right? Something like practice makes perfect. It's such a common, I have no idea who the original author is, but it is a very common expression that we use, right? So that's one way of giving it, you know, of attracting your reader. You can also use um, comparisons, you know, such as uh, by making mistakes, we, we learn. Avoid questions in your academic essay. I know that you may have seen that sometimes it says, oh, end with a question, open question. No, don't do that. You're writing an academic essay. You're not supposed to leave your, your reader, you know, it's not drama. You're not making, you're not producing a drama to, to have an open question at the end, right? So you can compare that uh, by making mistakes, we gain experience. Uh, therefore, if, even though painful, it can be fruitful. So you can do something like that too. And then you will, for proof of this, consider the examples from both science and everyday experience. So now we need to write the thesis statement here. We need to inform the reader because it says, for proof of this, consider examples from both science and everyday experience. So we have here already kind of like a guideline of what will be developed. So scientific experiments will be discussed in order to support this and that, along with empirical examples. So you will now have a thesis statement here. You have already grabbed your, your reader's attention. You have briefly mentioned how you are going to, you know, support your point. So people learn by doing and accordingly learn considerably from their mistakes, more from their mistakes than their success. We already know the, the writer's position here. For proof of this, consider examples from both science and everyday experience. Very well. So, 
The main purpose of a body paragraph is to support your thesis. So that's why always your body paragraphs will have one main idea that refer back to your main topic. You're going to have a topic sentence where you present your point. You're going to explain it. You're going to use an example or evidence to support. And then the effect, what exactly is the effect? Well, after you have presented a, an example, this is the moment when you're going to show how this situation will result in. So the effect is the result, it's the consequence, the impact. And then you're going to wrap up, okay? So let's suppose I'm talking about uh, should children be punished? And if so, what kind of punishment? So this is like a double question. There are two questions. Should children be punished? Yes or no. And if so, what kind of punishment? So my topic sentence is that punishment can be uh, a method for parents to show and teach their children how to behave in society as adults or how to have better appropriate attitudes in society. And I'm going to explain by saying so that it is expected that we all have manners and behave accordingly when in when attending college, when attending a, a social event. As an example, we can mention, uh, for example, chewing with their mouth open. So that's very rude. So the example is that parents would, you know, teach their children and explain that chewing with their mouth open is inappropriate. Now, what is the impact of this? Well, they are preparing their children to be accepted socially. And then you're going to conclude your paragraph. In the next paragraph, it's going to be, if so, what kind of punishment? Well, of course, not physical punishment, you know, brutal, but restrictions and uh, grounding, something like that. Okay, so you always have to have the first point. You need to explain. You need to illustrate. The best way to illustrate is with an example. Then after you have your example, you are going to say, well, what is the impact of this? Or you can say, if not, if parents don't take this role, then they will fail their children most likely to prepare them to be part of a member in society accepted by society or by doing the by teaching their children manners at the table children will be as adults they will be accepted socially now for body paragraphs you have to tie all the body paragraphs together so the linkers, remember that I said the first, the first and second stage, the third and fourth stage. So you can use things such as first, second, on the one hand, on the other hand, if it's an argumentative essay, provide relevant explanatory details and examples connected to the thesis statement. Remember, planning is necessary so that you don't drift off. So the topic was, should children be punished? And if so, what kind of punishment? So yes, they have to be punished because of this. What kind? And then you, the second body paragraph. And don't be too general. Be careful. Like I said, the example that I set was chewing with their mouth open. That's rude. So always go with an example that clearly demonstrates, in this case, a reason why parents would punish their children. And not just saying, well, punishment is, a, is appropriate to teach children. Okay. Teach what, why, how, so to be better, to be accepted socially, to have appropriate attitudes as adults. Now, so the previous paragraph that we talked about, remember it was both science and everyday experience are going to support to be learned from finding out that we have made more mistakes than from our successful actions. So, I'm going to give you girls one little minute for you to do a silent reading, and then we're going to try to identify, point, explain, and so on. Here we go.
Okay. So can you identify the topic sentence? Is it clear for you? Yes, take by way, Thomas Edson. So clearly yeah. this paragraph is going to discuss the scientific, you know, uh, yeah. right. And the example also was good. I like that because, you know, it's a, a, an example which everyone knows about. So it makes this reading interesting for me. There you go. It's not a, a, a crazy scientist there hidden in the middle yeah. of, of no, nowhere, right? So, yeah. and the invention of the light bulb, once again, it's something that everyone at some point in life they have heard, right? So then you say the famed American investor rose to prominence in the late 19th century because of his successes. Yes, but even he felt that these successes were the result of his many failures. Okay. So, of course, this is someone who has done some research use because when you do an academic uh, essay, you have the time to do research, maybe, I don't know, a, a biography, an autobiography, something. And because this is a sentence that you can't say in name of anyone that he felt the result has many failures. And there are even quotation marks, right? Isn't it too marks? much? Is it okay? Because I personally use a lot of quotations and sometimes I feel that it's not okay. No, it is okay, Prince, because here you're reproducing, right? Okay, yeah. You're reproducing something that, uh, that most likely you read from a document. As he himself said, right? As he himself said, so certainly. What's interesting about an essay is that as a writer, you don't necessarily have to put a source, what book or the, uh, even like the publisher or anything when you're doing an essay like this, okay? It's not an academic paper, it's an essay. Now, transition words are really helpful and they are used to connect ideas. Now, there are two types of transition words that we call. The linking devices, these are the ones that you are going to organize firstly, secondly, and then you have conjunctions. The distinction is that conjunctions connect ideas in one sentence, right? You connect two ideas into one sentence. In order for you to use the right conjunction, you have to understand what is the relationship between the two ideas that you want to connect? Is it a contrast? Is it an explanation? Because, is it an addition? And is it a concession though? So depending on the relationship between the ideas, you choose the correct conjunction. The linking devices, they will organize your story. And you can sometimes use linking devices in the middle of the paragraphs. Furthermore, if you have, let's suppose, two points that you want to discuss to support your point of view. So linking devices, yes, Yanni? Thank you, Anna. Are you talking about words such as uh, therefore, however? So, however, this is an adverbial, right? It's not a conjunction, but it also is a connector then. It's a linking device. They are linking devices. So, firstly, secondly, on one hand, on the other hand. Okay, so these are linking devices. Furthermore, moreover, and then you have conjunctions. Because, while, but, uh, as, okay? So then these are to join ideas in one sentence. And then you're going to have to identify the relationship between the ideas in order to use the correct thing. Because your reader, if your reader reads a but, he's going to understand a contrast will come after it. Okay. Can you can you please repeat the examples for me again uh, for the linking devices? Oh, okay. The linking Such devices. As... Furthermore, firstly, secondly, on one hand, on the other hand. By means of, that's also used. Excuse me. Um, a if nice, he, yeah. Uh, if you use uh, uh, much, much more than a uh, conjunction, um, I'm concerned uh, about this make so completely co confused. Oh no. oh, no, you have to be careful. You can't overuse conjunctions because Linking devices, for instance, for example, pronouns are also linking devices. 
in English that you can use because a pronoun refers back to an element that was referred previously. You have relative pronouns that also, so you're not going to use only and, but, and so on. You have several resources to enrich your, you have correlative conjunctions, not only, but also. So conjunctions, they, they are only used when you are joining ideas, one idea with, and the next idea, they come together. Now, if not, linking devices also, you have to be careful because you're going to start firstly, secondly, thirdly, and then you're going to go after that. That's just too much in, in one paragraph, yeah. right? Oh, okay. so yeah. Overuse is also dangerous. Okay, thank you. And they are also referred to as, let's suppose, like signal words. Um, and signal words, they can even be, for example, adverbs. When you say sometimes, so sometimes it's like a signal word the, and a word that can even link the ideas. So you're talking about an, uh, 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 an event that happens every year and sometimes it uh, is twice a year. So then you're going to add information by using an adverb instead of a common connector. So linking devices can be pronouns, they can be transition words and phrases, and they can also be adverbs at some point. Guys, just give me a minute. It started a big storm, and I just want to double check as I hear a door banging. Forgive me. Guys, are you are you doing your book? I haven't started yet, but I will probably get it done between today and tomorrow. Did you register to a MOOC and did you participate? Oh my God, no, I I totally forgot that we needed to register. Yeah, yeah, Daniel said that. He said you have Jesus to register. Yes, the, that's why I said it takes time. And for 5th of February is not you know, enough. For me, it's not because we are supposed to register and take participate in that you know course and then write about that oh thank you thank you yeah the temperature rises sometimes like to 40 degrees and suddenly comes these terrible rainstorms right okay okay so in terms of linking devices and transition words we're good to go yeah here yep. we go so this is a little list you see that you can use of course there are others so you have order and sequence, you have addition, example, cause. So these are all words that can help you link. They are linking devices. You will receive this material just like I did the last class. I will send it to you. Mm, okay. Great. Now, remember that in the introduction, it said that we're going to talk about science and every day. We already talked about science. Now, in a similar way, we are all like Edson in our own way. We're going to discuss the we here. Hold on. Whenever we learn a new skill, be it riding a bike, driving a car, or cooking a cake, we learn from our mistakes. Few, if any, are ready to go from training wheels to a marathon in a single day. But these early experiences, these so-called mistakes, can help us improve our performance over time. You cannot make a cake without breaking a few eggs. And likewise, we learn by doing and doing inevitably means making mistakes. So this is the everyday. This is the personal narrative part that the, uh, the writer stated at the beginning. Now, if we use the we in a case like this, this is a, a topic that it, there's, it's not controversial. It doesn't pose any kind of, you know, debate. It's not religion, it's not politics, it's not anything that will cause it. It's a very personal perspective. In this case, to describe a, an everyday action, you can use then the we, because it's almost like a narrative. We do this, we do that, and every day, it's almost empirical, this. Therefore, in this case, you can. So you see, oh, you can't use we. Yes, no, you can't. But in cases like this, when in the introduction you said that you would do every day, and then you, it's a, it's a topic that is not debatable. I mean, talking about mistakes, it's so every, everybody 
we make mistakes. Now, if the prompt goes to something cultural, um, po political, or that you know needs to have a, a strong position, that's when you should avoid the we. Unless once again it's a personal narrative, then it's going to be I and not we. In this case, it's kind of like trying to embrace and englobe the listeners, of course, the the, the readers, and including the writer. So the conclusion now, you're going to open with a concluding transition. In conclusion, in the end, always signal to your reader that you are concluding, it's important. Then you're going to kind of like, your conclusion is kind of like a paraphrase of your introduction. You kind of like go back to what you, you know, to, to really show your, re your reader that what you proposed at the beginning, you achieved throughout your essay. And the restatement of your thesis. So, as a task, I propose that you, for next class, I would like you to prepare, and we're going to begin the class quickly with conclusions. So, since you're going to receive the material, I would like you to give it a go. You have the introduction, body one, body two. What would be a good conclusion for these parts? Okay. And then we will begin the class. Taking a look, you can even reply to my email ahead of time so I can prepare all the responses and we can begin the class discussing your responses. Okay. So, we're going to get some practice now. Here we go. Um, I'm, I would like you to take a few seconds to read this prompt. And you're going to tell me, is this an academic essay or is it an academic paper? still don't know the difference between paper and essay. I think you're almost the same. The essay is when you write without having to cite sources because it's an essay. It's a personal piece of writing. Yeah. When you're doing an academic paper, you're writing a paper and that means that you're going to use references. Okay. This looks like an academic paper. Yeah, it can be this is an academic paper. There you go. Yeah. That's it. Okay. So here, since it's an academic paper, you're going to need statistics of, you know, official data you're going to need. It can't be imaginary just to adjust to your topic as an essay. Now, so you have to kind of consider why do they think this? So this is something that you have. To, so does the amount of time a criminal stay in jail contribute to decreasing? Crime rates. So, why do some people think this? What effect would longer prison sentences have on criminals, on society? So, all of this, you're going to use data and statistics to support. So, I'm in order to develop my idea of time in jail, I'm thinking, well, why do some people think this? The effect that this would have, because the data is going to allow me to kind of like draw an effect. If 90% of the criminals, let's suppose in Australia, 90% of the criminals who are released from jail uh, commit crimes again. So, what can we understand from this data? That, in fact, jail is not a place to rehabilitate people. So, in fact, jail may even be a place to, to develop criminals. So, something, so you always have to consider that your data has to have an analysis. And you need to show your analysis. It, it, it's not the, mat the matter of it being right or wrong. Of course, if you say 90% of the criminals are released and commit a crime, you would say, well, jail is very effective. Obviously, it's not effective, right? So you, you have to be reasonable in your deductions, in your interpretations. And then you're going to think of specific examples. So when you're going to look for date and so on, Try not to be too general because you're writing an academic paper. It's not a PhD thesis, right? So focus on one example, one country, one type of crime, and so on. Don't try to expand too much, narrow it down. Now, 
you can also go on another way. Why do some people think longer prison terms are not the solution? So we look at the data. What are other ways to reduce and prevent crime? What can be done inside prison and outside? So there are two ways that you can analyze this. It depends your perspective. You can analyze by saying, yes, this is good. Look at my data, this and this. And then on another hand, if you take a country like Norway, Norway is going to show the opposite. The rehabilitation is, is high. Uh, jail systems, they have rehabilitation centers, uh, educational centers, and so on. So it all depends on what, how do you want to portray this? So as a writer, you always have to, understand, uh, to, in, to find in your, in your heart how you want to portray the topic. So ideally, once again, you have a structure. Now, in some cases, you can do four body paragraphs, but in others, you will have to do five. Let's see why. So here it says, a lot of people have become dependent on technology as it plays a big role in our daily lives. Do you agree that living in the computer age has more advantages than disadvantages? Describe the positive and negative impacts of technology on our lives and give your opinion. Look how different this question is from the next. I would like you to read and try to identify the difference between the two questions. Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, what's that? <laughs> I guess it's the, the thunderstorm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the first one says, describe positive and negative impacts of technology on our lives and give your opinion. Mm -hmm. Here it says, what are the negative and positive impacts of playing computer games and what can be done to minimize the bad effects? So if you're planning your essay, Body one is going to talk about the negatives, let's suppose. So this is going to be body one. Body two is going to talk about positives. And then what can be done is going to be body three. Right? So this is one way to answer this question. If you're going to do the previous one, Then you have here, positive is going to be body one, negative is going to be body two. You are going to give your opinion, take your stand. Your opinion will come in the introduction and in the body paragraph that you choose, if it's positive or negative. You're going to reinforce your position. Your opinion will also come here. Remember, you always restate your opinion in the conclusion. Okay, so I'm going to, what would I like you girls to do now? Do you think you could try to write a first sentence for this prompt? Okay, Vianney, take care, my dear. Bye. Bye, Vianney. Let's try Bye. to write a topic, uh, uh, a first sentence. For the introduction, like the introduction or for the body? Beautiful. That's it. Okay, I'll give you girls like three minutes to go, because this is a very common topic, right? Dependence on technology and so on. So remember that in the introduction, you have to make clear what you're going to discuss, the advantages or disadvantages of technology and so on. I'll give you girls a couple of minutes. As soon as you feel comfortable, let's, whatever you have after three minutes, you will send in the chat box and we will discuss it together.
Okay. Good brain practice, isn't it? Indeed. Yeah. You know, yeah. my problem is when I start writing, I use a lot of we, we, we. And suddenly I recognize that I, I try to, you know, I mean, that is challenging exactly. for me. So, it, yeah. Eileen, did you do it in handwriting or did you type, please? Yeah, because my computer is doesn't work. That's why oh, I I use my com uh, use my phone and I can't <laughs> use my finger. So ah, sorry. okay, don't worry. So <laughs> it goes like this. I have a first sentence that would be: Technology can be seen as a blessing or a curse. That would be my first sentence. You see. To get started, and then I would. Sorry, passive. It's okay. Uh, yeah, technology can be seen as. Uh, yes, we shouldn't use a passive. So, what can we do here to fix it? You got me. You got it right away. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Sorry. <can> do? <laughs> because I love any... passive sentences, and I'm I... used to using it. Oh no, yeah, but not in the introduction. For many people, technology can be. A blessing or a curse, right? Mm -hmm. So then you have to put in order to avoid the passive, you need to have a subject. Yeah. Because we use passives because we don't have a subject. So then exactly. my subject is going to be for many people, mm -hmm. technology can be a blessing or a curse. That would be the way to change it, right? To give it a subject. Well done, Ida. You have a good eye to spot. Okay, so that would be that would be your hook sentence, that big first sentence to draw your reader to what you're going to develop. What did you put there, Ida, please? Started with living in 21st century means living in technology era. So living in the 21st century means living in the technology era, right? Yeah. Because technology era is very specific. Yeah. The Perfect. Articles are boring. And then the next sentence, what would it be? The thesis statement, right? Yeah, I said um, there is no way out. And to be honest, it's helping in different ways. I think it's there helpful. You go. That's a very good. So there is no way out. And honestly, it helps in many ways. I would go with the simple present instead of present continuous because it's more like a statement, right? The simple present. It's better, yeah, it helps. And now you have the positive and negative to include there and the opinion, right? Yeah. So what is your opinion? What is the writer's opinion? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I personally, um, you know, I agree that I like technology. So I didn't write yes. more. I said that everyone is, de again, I said everyone is depending. I think it's better to use simple present again. Everyone depends on technology, whether it's a child or an adult. Okay. I mean, it's, yeah, isn't it better? Simple present again, yeah, statement. Yeah, definitely. And what about the positive and negative? Where did you include the positive and negative? I didn't write it. I haven't write it, written it yet. Um, so instead of the child or adult, maybe you should be doing the fact that there are positive and negative, you know, that it can yeah. have a positive. Isn't it too it soon to start? Yeah, I would eliminate that sentence of children or adults because it's you're slightly going off topic, right? Yep. The main topic here is the positive and negative impacts of technology on our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agree. Right? Okay. Yeah. Eileen, do you like to write? Yeah, I like. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So for next class, the home, I'm going to, Eileen, I just don't have your email. Mm -hmm. I have Ida's yeah. and uh, Yanni's. Can you put your email in the chat box, please? Yep. Okay. So I can add okay. you. So we are supposed to read that and just, um, Try to write a con conclusion. Yes, for the sample essay that you have introduction, body one, body two. I'll I'll explain that also in the in the email just to make sure that it's clear. Great. Thank you. 
and does it matter if it's long or short? Ideally, a conclusion should be like two to three sentences, not more than that. And how about our essays for the diesel? Oh, no, then it's a different perspective because it's not, yeah. it's, uh, it, it has a, a word count. You have to see what's the word count. And I think it's to develop a broader topic. I don't remember exactly what the prompt is. The research paper, definitely. The conclusion then is completely different from an essay. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so let me. I'm just going to take note of your email, not to forget it, not to lose it. Because thank you, Eileen. So you can expect an email yep. later yep. today. I will send, and Dr. Siavash will send the link to the recording. And okay, 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 very well, girls. Have a wonderful day. I hope to see. I hope you have a nice weekend, and I'll see you girls you. on Wednesday. We're going to thank work you. on research paper then. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. See you later. Bye.